Thank you for coming on to JPad Tune In. In 45 seconds, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Oh, um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm Jess and I'm the owner and head coach of East Coast Tigers. We're in Scarborough, North Yorkshire. Um, when I'm not cheerleading, I am I work for Royal Mail. So I work for Royal Mail during the day and then we have our sessions on an evening. Um, so I'm there every night. So um, I, I literally just, I work for Royal Mail and I cheer. I don't have any time <laughs> for anything else. Um, I used to have so many other hobbies, but um, yeah, che- uh, being a gym owner, it's it's very time consuming. So yeah, I, um, I am a cheerleading coach and a post lady. Love it. Love it. How long has um how long have you been going now? I started East Coast Tigers originally in 2007. Um and we actually ran for five seasons then. And then I really, really wanted to travel. So I took a break. The team, the team closed. Um and when I came home in 2015, um I just thought it was time to to start it again so we actually re-established in 2016 Mm -hmm. um and we're coming into our sixth season so um I say season six now but we we did have five seasons previously but it's like a different era is that east coast tigers so we've been around a long time but um these six seasons have been very different to the previous seasons that we had yeah like how how different has it been from obviously those first five to then? Oh my God, it's cheerleading has evolved massively. We were level three back then. Yeah. Um, but if you were, were to watch um, one of our routines from back then, it was so basic. Um, level three now is just, you know, it's incredible. So it we, I mean, other than the difference in doing extended stunts, it was, it almost looked like level one. It, you know, it was, very, it was very, very boring compared to what it is now. Not yeah. saying that level one is boring. Most of my teams now are level one and it's, you know, it's very creative nowadays, but, and also just the amount of teams that, um, around the country has changed massively um it's amazing to see how much the sport has grown in this country um I was going to say because obviously when you first started it it still was fairly new it wasn't new but it was yeah people didn't know didn't really know what I did back then um but now if you say you're a cheer you know cheerleading they do they do tend to know what it is which is good (laughs) yeah yeah oh without a doubt without a doubt like say what have you guys been up to then? Um, well, obviously, we've been like every other team over lockdown. We've really tried to keep our athletes engaged. Um, we, we did our best to keep them fit, but that wasn't really our main goal. We just wanted to keep them engaged. Um, cheerleading is obviously a, such a positive focus for, for anyone that's involved in it. And um, we just wanted to keep them um feeling that positiveness especially through that through the tough time that we've had um so we did a lot of virtual um the first lockdown was very different i we ran a home training program so i was literally in my garden making youtube videos and i would upload them every week and they had little tasks on them and the girls would take part and we had this home training group for all the parents and the parents would post the videos of the kids doing the tasks in there and it was awesome and everyone's you know stuck by it but it was too difficult to kind of keep up with once this first lockdown was over and like I said I worked for Royal Mail it was mental um I just didn't have the time um and we just kind of the next lockdown we started working in teams so the teams had zoom sessions like they would be at practice it was during their actual practice time and um and then the third lockdown was the same (laughs) and then since we've been back at the gym uh we've we've entered the super cyber future chair super cyber one which is happening this weekend so we get to see um we get to watch tomorrow our our teams that entered that and then our because we had um over 18s in our senior two team we weren't able to enter them into this weekend so we've entered them into the one that is aired in june 
Um, so we've just been doing that really. We we did we entered non-building. We just didn't have time to make the stunts look as good as they could have. So we entered non-building. It's been very weird. Um, well, that's it. Like you're saying, you couldn't build the stunts and that, but you haven't really had time, have you? No, and at all. So. And it, they, the stunts really took a hit from not being at the gym. Um, mm. We've been really amazed at how well the athletes took to tumbling coming back. They haven't really lost any of that technique or they lost their stamina a little bit, but tumble wise, they're, they were all looking amazing. But we've really struggled to get back to stunting, especially because you're, you've got time limits on it now. Um, you know, it's 15 minutes at a time. So what we've been doing is we've doing 15 minutes at the beginning, stopping, hand sanitizing. And then for the rest of the practice, we've been doing uh, tumbling jumps, the actual routine work. And then at the end, we've been doing another 15 minutes. But it's it goes so fast. Yeah, You don't have time to really get anything up to the standard you would want it to be so i'm really amazed at all these teams that are entering um real routines at these virtual competitions because we just we just haven't been able to to do it yeah no i can imagine it has been hard and like how have you found it hard like having to adapt to all the restrictions and that that you've got to do put in place like you said 15 minutes at the start 15 minutes at the end yeah at first it was very alien and I to be quite honest with you I really wasn't enjoying it mm. it felt because I was at work all day and it was busy and tiring I, I didn't have once we were able to to go back to cheer but the very first time when the restrictions were all very new I didn't really want to go. It wasn't the chair that I loved just as much as it wasn't the chair that the athletes loved. Um, but we, we, the restrictions within our gym were really easy to follow. Obviously we, yeah. we were really careful with it all, but at, I was so amazed that so many kids stuck with it because at first we weren't allowed to stunt at all, were we? Um, right, yeah. And then we were, we have, we had little, we've got little boxes on our chair floor. So we, we, we sectioned it all off. We put a little star in the middle of each one. So we'd say, mm. go back to your boxes. Everyone stand <laughs> on your stars. And now it's completely normal. But at first, um, it was so alien. And I just can't believe that we've we've got through it. I mean, we're not out of the woods, are we? But we've got through it. And well, yeah, we're a lot further forward, aren't we, than we was a year ago. Yeah. I I can't, when you think back to that, it fills me with dread. Just remembering I that I re what's funny is I remember the, the night that we'd made the decision to close. Um, we did it actually, we, we closed a week earlier than a lot of teams, mainly because I, I'm, I've, I really didn't want the parents to be worried about the kids. So mm -hmm. we, we, we made the decision to close. I think it, I can't remember the date exactly, but I remember thinking, oh, well, it'll only be a few weeks. You know, some of our kids had put on Instagram, oh, gutted the gym's clothes for a couple of weeks. Can't wait yeah. to be back. Look at us now. <laughs> a year I know, it is. Like, I've said it before in, like, to people, and it's crazy. I remember, like, the last competition was the weekend that he announced, we've got to go yeah. into lockdown. And, yeah, it was sat in that arena going, yeah, we'll, we'll be back at it in a few months. I know. We were at Circus Spectacular, which was the 5th and 6th of March. Mm. And then it was around the 17th of March that we closed our doors. And then we haven't, obviously, we haven't been to one since. And um, Yeah, see, so the one was, what was it, 14th, 15th of March. So it must have been like the following weekend. Yeah. We were at um, University Nationals, BCA. Yeah. And it, it was such, like, it was a weird competition, but it was a nice competition as well. Because everyone was, like, appreciative. Yeah, but you know what? It, I was like, really annoyed at myself because um, that weekend at Future Chair was such a long one. Um, and I remember just, I remember almost wishing the time away and wishing like, especially because sometimes you've got such long waits, haven't you? Yeah. And being the head coach of a programme, you're there from the beginning to the end, regardless. And I just remember thinking, oh, hurry up. You know, I'm so tired. I'd love to go home. And then... I'd, I'll never ever say anything like that again. I was going to say, never like, now you're going to go, now you're going to go back to it and just be like, come on, can we have another day? Can we? Yeah, come yeah. On. <laughs> I am not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll have to force me out these doors. Yeah. Like, have you guys got any like competitions planned, like, other than the, like, the ones you've mentioned? 
Um, Are you planning this, any this for the year? Rest of this season. Season. Um, we'd we planned actually on going to BCA Champions Challenge. Um, we were all ready to go for that. We booked hotels. You know, we really thought it'd go ahead, and then it went virtual. And we had the big decision to to make as to whether we we do that virtual or whether we just call it um, because we. Although there's a lot of teams going to Future Chair Bournemouth, it's really far for us. Mm. Um, I, we try to stay as close as possible. And as much as I would love to go to Bournemouth, it is just too far. So, no, unfortunately, um, once the call was made about BCA, we decided that we would we would start again, basically. So we're currently in, um, we're doing skills classes at the moment. Like I say, we, we, we've we really struggled getting our stunts back up to standard. So we just decided that May and June, we're gonna be focused on the athletes um, yeah. and building their skill sets back up, ready for next season. Um, and I think the difference in them now, seeing them in the gym, it's huge because we're not just working on non-building, you know, we're and we're not rushing them they can now in their own time get back to being the best that best they can be back to being what they were when we left circus that weekend yeah um and more because they've all still been achieving um over this time um so yeah unfortunately no our next competition is heart of england next year okay so that's yeah. depressing to think that that's that's like next year <laughs> Yeah, but then if you look at it like how quick has this year gone? Although yeah. It doesn't seem it, but then it, yeah, it it'll, has, be, here, it it'll will, be here in no we're, time. We're back to training now, aren't we? And yeah. we, you know, we get a bit of a break. Uh, we're, we're starting our season early like a lot of teams are. Um, so we're training through the summer, which is not something we would normally do. We want our kids normally to have a summer, mm. but we've missed so much and so many teams are starting early that I was worried that we would fall behind um and with our a lot of our kids are aging well most of our kids are aging out into the next teams this season yeah. so it is a step up for them all so starting early getting them in um they want to be there really um they've been out a bit for so long they just yeah they, they love being at the gym you know that one of my coaches is there today she's there all day with private sessions her, her <laughs> she runs she coaches the mini team yeah. her mini team literally have booked her all day she's one after another back to back with her uh, mini team they just want to be there so it was the right call really and we're really excited to to start a little bit earlier and make sure we're definitely ready for heart of england yeah no that would be wicked that will be wicked. And we are coming to BCA next year as well. We've got um there's one at the end of May. We've got that on the on the um calendar. Is it spotlight show? I don't remember what it's called. Summer showdown or summer spotlight. I think it's summer spotlight. We've not been to it before. Um we we're down for that. So if you guys are there taking where, photos, we'll where is it? Where is it? Um trying to it's bad, isn't it? I should know, but I'm trying it to it might be Sheffield. <laughs> I might be wrong there. Sheffield will be. We try not to go Halloween. very far, so it could be Sheffield, or it could be Newcastle. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> no, it's Newcastle at the end. Uh, it's like the twenty first, twenty second. Yes, it's that one. Yeah, it's Newcastle. North oh, lovely. Yeah, Northumbria. Yeah. yeah. So no, we'll do it as well. We'll be there, mate. We'll be there. Don't you worry. Awesome, because you've taken some really good photos of us in the past. <laughs> Oh, um, lovely to hear. Love team. I love. I love action shots. <laughs> mm. We we love to capture them as well. Then it's good fun. Yeah. But, like it's inter. You know when you're delivering, like in your day job doing Royal Mail. And yeah. That, is that when you spend time, like thinking about, like the choreography and oh. planning out routines and that? I bet that's perfect for it, isn't it? It is. I honestly right. So obviously. When you when you run a business like this, you run it on your phone um, yeah. when you're not in the gym. Um, so I, I've i been with Royal Mail for five years now. The, du the duty that I'm on, I know like the back of my hand. I don't really have to think. I know where I'm going. I know everyone. It's no, no brainer now. So I can literally 
do the admin while I'm delivering the mail. So <laughs> everybody just sees me wandering around with my phone. They're always like, put that away. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I'm answering parents. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't, I just constantly think about cheer. Um, sometimes I have to turn my brain off with it though. So that's when I'll put a podcast on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, to try and not think about cheer. But yeah, it's p- the perfect opportunity. And it's a really... I do right. I do the job that I do because of the t- because of the hours because it means that I'm home by three. I can have my tea and I can go to the gym. And I'm, in every other job I've done, it's like nine to five, sometimes six. I'd never be able to do rush into the gym, scoffing your dinner down yeah, while you're and on I your way. Manage, it's like, I'm till like ten o'clock some nights, and um, so yeah, that's why I do the job that I do. But it's good. Yeah, it's good. And on my phone, just. I can answer any questions during the day. I get phone calls and yeah. So if I, if I didn't have that time, I would struggle to fit it all in. Yeah, no, I can imagine. I can imagine you would. But like, like you said, it is basically a gym is running a business, isn't it? Yeah. And that what, like, what would you say has been the biggest struggle like throughout sort of business wise? Well, like... we, we operate a little differently to a normal uh, to a to a lot of the gyms around the country we we're um we're all volunteers so we don't get paid mm-hmm. at the moment it's something we would really it's something we're aiming for um we when we first opened our gym the only reason we were able to do it is because we're we're uh, registered as a charity um so we're a a CIO which is a charitable incorporated organization so we get the rates relief um, yeah. and due to being that due to being classed as that we have received so much money over this um, horrible period um, and so actually that is one thing I haven't had to worry about and I am so grateful for because I have seen so many gyms struggling um, and at, the, at, the, at first, before the, the grants were kind of released, I was a little bit worried. You know, we, we weren't sure whether we'd be able to pay the first month's rent. All the parents got stuck in and helped us out. Um, but then all the money started coming in from the government and other companies that wanted to help. And so money wise, ha- it hasn't been a worry at all. If anything, we, we're fi- financially better off because of COVID, um, which I'm not i'm not bragging about it i'm very grateful and we're very lucky and thankfully i'm very good with money and it will it will help us as long as it needs to help us the biggest worry for me with our business was losing the athletes because we are quite a small team and although we have this we've had this help from the government that money isn't still coming in it so only goes so far doesn't it and it does and eventually when it runs out we need those kids to be able to keep our gym open but at the same time we've 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 all bonded you know we've we've created these relationships with these kids and it would have been devastating if they'd have just given up so that was why what we were doing over lockdown it was actually so stressful, you know, trying to put out things that to get them involved and keep them interested. I absolutely hated it. Um, it was <laughs> it was so stressful. And it wasn't just because it wasn't hard to put things together. It was trying to do things and and trying to keep on top of the kids to make sure that they were doing them because trying to keep them but, engaged, wasn't it? Yeah, we weren't trying, we weren't being mean, like you have to do this. It was more, we were worrying about their mental health. It, we we knew that if they were taking part and still coming in on Zoom and seeing their teams every week, that they'd get through it. Yeah. Um, and if they didn't do that and they can't, because I know what it's like to feel unmotivated and not want to do something because it's, I mean, they was logging on Zoom for school, weren't they? And then having to come back on for cheer. It wasn't ideal. Um, we all have I those knew... days, though, don't we? Where we're unmotivated, oh, just like... Oh. Absolutely. On my day off, I have to clean the gym and the house. And I just sit on my sofa and I don't do it. Because <laughs> I don't you, just look, you look at the broom or you look at the hoover and you're just like, yeah, I'll do that in a minute. Yeah, and, and it's that motivation. And I just... I just don't have it. And I can totally understand why the kids haven't had that. Um, so that was, I think that was the hardest thing. 
thankfully it wasn't money that I was worrying about like a lot of teams it was just worrying about whether those kids would still be there when we when we came back um, yeah. and worrying about them personally as well you know worrying about them as as individuals um that's it because like the like the industry as a whole like when we say you've got teams and that it it oh, what's the word it doesn't describe it as it is because you become more of like a, a family really don't you because you yeah. are with each other for so much time of the week and we are a very family family orientated team because mm. we're quite small um and it's the way we we run it as well our coaches have because we're all volunteers we obviously do this because we love it yeah, we don't do it and... to get paid yeah we we've never been paid we don't do it for that we just absolutely love what we do we love the kids that we coach we love the parents we love the whole th- um the whole family vibe type thing it's it's a second family Mm -hmm. um one thing that's been quite difficult with covid and the restrictions is we can't let the parents in the gym and although we we have closed practices we've never opened our doors for people to watch it's those relationships with the parents that we've missed because they'll come in to collect the kids we'll have a good chat you know it's really nice to see them you know they're all they're all friends on Facebook with us because it's it's that we're a family um and they're not afraid to drop us a message you know there was a there was a few times in lockdown. There's a look, one of one of our youth parents. I think she could see I was having a tough time and that it was it was hard for me, just as it was for the kids. And she would send me lovely messages just to see, just to see if I was okay and just just to say, you know, let me know if you need to chat, if there's anything I can do. There's one parent that lives on my post round. Yeah. And one day I think she could see I was just having a bad day. And she just um she opened the door and she just chatted to me and she just made me feel so much better and those are the relationships that we have with our athletes and parents and um that's what it, it's it's hard to explain to people that aren't part of our sport what what that's all about but it's very different to dance you know it's very different to the dance clubs in our town it's it's very different to anything like that but it's hard to explain, like you say. Yeah. I can't really put it into words. No, yeah, without a doubt. It, is. it has, like, over the whole period, it has been lovely to see the community coming together and putting oh, their hands up and going, yeah. look, I'm here, If you, even if it's a rant or if you are yeah, having a rubbish day. As much as COVID has been horrendous around the world, not just in cheerleading, you know, we're just one, What what's happened to us is just one small part of it it has really brought our community together and sport cheer England stepping up in that time of, of us needing them. um, I just, it's, it's amazing. And our parents have noticed that too, the community that we've created, not just within the East Coast Tigers, but around the country. It's like the relationships that have been built as well. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy because when we do return to comps and that, people I've said it before in other episodes but like people are going to be going to those comps and going oh my god like it's amazing I haven't seen you in ages and they've yeah. only, they've only ever met like on zoom yeah and um, I think there's going to be so much more support for mm-hmm. the for when we first get to a competition I just think everyone is going to be so buzzing and they're all just going to be so supportive of all the teams regardless because there are a lot there is a lot of support from other teams don't get me wrong um but I think more so now everyone's just going to be so happy that we are all back to what we love and everyone's just going to be supporting each other even more so and that moment is just I think I might cry (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you'll be alone mate no no there will definitely be a fair few from that yeah like like what have you guys got planned for the future um like you well, said part of england yeah obviously year. what we we want to get back to normal that is yeah. a, that is in the plan we want to have we moved into our gym uh, we it was our gym's birthday yesterday so we oh, it's happy two birthday years. thank you uh, it's 2 years since we moved in but we on the first year it was like mid season so and then the second year 
COVID hit. So we haven't had a full season in our gym yet from start to finish. So we really, really want season six to be that year yeah. uh, where we, we start it and we end it in the gym and we attend all of our competitions and we, we go back to normal. Um, and then we just want to rebuild. We haven't, like I say, we haven't really lost um, any competitive athletes. And when it comes to our evaluations this season, we're hoping to bring more on. Um, our recreational program is huge. Uh, and obviously there's kids in there that are hoping to step up into competitive and then the waiting lists will start to go down for the recreational teams, thankfully. Um, but we just want to rebuild within our teams you know get back to what we what we were how we were before how strong we were before and for for our coaches we want to we want to learn as much as we can we're really in we're, we've got um, a tumble camp bunk, uh, tumble camp booked with their drills in july yeah. uh, so he's coming to do a camp with our athletes but he's also coming to do um like um a coaching camp with our coaches as well oh, okay. because we are really keen to improve our programs tumbling um and I think obviously that comes from the coaches first um and so that's one thing I made a list of goals and that was one thing on my goals list um was to improve our tumble program because yeah. now more than ever tumbling is is huge isn't it it's such a huge part uh, of cheerleading and we as obviously we can do our tumbles in our level we've got our ratios but we just want we want to do more and now we've yeah. got a gym and we've got as much equipment as we can fit in the gym there's so much to learn and this and our athletes already in this last few weeks skill sessions have really improved their tumbling so we're really keen to just go for those um those high scores in our tumbles that's one of the other goals that we have I suppose um, like what you've just like said then I suppose it's it's quite good because it's like yes you are you're a coach and you've got coaches but the development doesn't stop there does it it's not absolutely not like it's um, all about the personal development and that's not just in cheer like you can it's everyday life really isn't it like you said earlier yeah. you were you were listening to podcasts and yeah you could it may be irrelevant but you could pick something up in that podcast that you're like oh actually yeah um, and obviously you go and do your we're all qualified through bgu uh yeah. so we, we obviously off oh, off we go do our bgu um and that's that is not the end you yes you qualify as a coach after your uh bgu but you still you can still sit there and think i actually don't know very much and you have to, as a coach, then you, you've got to push yourself to learn as much as you can, because not only because not the industry is changing, it, it evolves, it evolves weekly. There's so much to learn. And one of the biggest things that I found over lockdown and even now uh, is people putting those little accounts together on Instagram where they're showing you drills for tumbling. Um, there's not really many for stunts. It's mainly for tumbling. Um, mm. But it's like um, Gareth's, Gareth's tumbling account, Big G tumbling. They're, they're yeah. fantastic. Bear Drills has one that we use. Um, there's, um, is it Chloe from Wolverines? Her account on Instagram. And, and I know you're only learning from videos, but I cannot tell you how valuable that has been for me and my coaches, because it's not always a sim it's not always easy to just um, have the weekend off to go and do a, another course or, you know, we all work because this isn't our job, Chile, yeah. we all have other jobs and getting the time off the competitions is hard enough. Um, so it, it's been really valuable, all the kind of um, resources that have been on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, so we've we've learned loads over lockdown, but yeah. we're hungry for more. You know, we, we can't wait for this full day with Rob teaching us as much as he can about tumbling. Um, and flight school is another one. We did, I, I, I did the virtual flight school. 
it, it was great, but it was it was nothing compared to going. Yeah, uh, being in and person. I can't wait to go back. Yeah, I just love to learn. I want to learn as much as I can so that my athletes can be the best they can be. And yeah. my coaches are the same. I'm so lucky to have such passionate, dedicated coaches within my program um, who just, again, volunteers. They're there because they love it. They're there because they they love cheerleading they've all been athletes apart from our newest lead coach who is actually a cheer mum okay Um, so they they all understand um cheerleading because they've they've all been there and done that um and my junior coaching team's massive there's loads of them but and they're all athletes so you know we're all that's lovely to like it's that's lovely to see as well throughout all the gyms is it's yeah you, they are coming to compete but they're also starting that journey in coaching as well and it is yeah. they are because at the end of the day they are going to be the future yeah ones they, leading the industry aren't they or the they leading are, the teams in the industry we've I can't even I don't even know how many junior coaches I have now I've got we've got a BGU course booked at our gym at the end of June and there's a a load of my new junior coaches getting qualified then but the we we never had junior coaches until I want to say two three years ago and the they are so valuable within our program they they're role models and the kids especially because they come from our teams. So the other the other athletes within the teams look up to them so much. They all lead by example, just like our lead coaches do. They all, they're so inspiring. It's, um, I'm inspired by them. You know, it's, it's amazing. And they want to be, it's, it's crazy. They want to be a coach within the team that I built. And I just, it's crazy, you know. I bet it's I, lovely to see though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I'm very proud of every single athlete and I'm extremely proud of the junior coaches yeah. because they are young um, and they, they've they dedicated themselves to that and they really do a fantastic job. No, that's, that's lovely to hear and lovely, lovely to see as well that it is inspiring you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. They say, um, if you could, like, if you could say something to anyone that's out there listening to this or watching it that could motivate them and get them off the sofa and into the gym, like, what would you say? I would say just go for it. Give it a go. It's, I think if people are on the, are on the fence about whether they want to cheer, they just need to come along and give it a go because it's like nothing else. Um, when you, the amount of people, the amount of kids and even coaches have, that have come into our program and gone, I can't believe I didn't do this earlier or I, I can't believe how much I love this. Um, obviously it's not for everyone, but it's the best thing I have ever done. It's the, it's the most addictive thing I've ever done. Um <laughs> And I I know that a lot of people, for example, look at our Instagram page and they're not sure whether to go for it. Um, And I just really wish that they would because they would absolutely love it. Um, I just think at this moment in time as well, after the year that we've had, if you want to do something, just go for it. It doesn't have to be cheerleading. Don't sit around any longer and wish that you had. Just do it give it a go because we've been locked in our houses for most of the last year, not being able to do what we've wanted to do. And if you have a chance, you should definitely just take it because what's the worst that could happen? You don't enjoy it. So you don't go back. Um, But more, more often than not, you're probably going to enjoy what you, if you really want to try something, you're probably going to end up enjoying it, aren't you? So I would love it if all those people that are looking at our Instagram account in Scarborough and wishing that they had the confidence to try it. I just wish they would. I just wish they'd try it. Come along to an evaluation, see what you think. You can always just never come back again if you don't enjoy it. Yeah. How would um, how would people find you on Instagram? 
uh, we're East Coast Tigers, so at East Coast Tigers. Um, that's our mo- That's our best place. I love Instagram. It's amazing. Yeah, I do I'm, as well. I'm on it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Instagram, yeah, or we have Facebook as well. That's where most of our messages come in. To be honest, I don't. I'm not a fa- I'm not a huge Facebook fan, but we have to have it. So you can contact us again. I think it. I think it's East Coast Tigers. I can, you know, I, you never see the. You never yeah. see the, at the top, but if you type East Coast Tigers in, we're the only ones. So um you guys will pop up. Yeah, that's it really. They're the only two socials I use. Um, or you can email me on Jess at East Coast Tigers.co.uk. Um and if you're thinking about joining, just do it. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. We honestly brilliant. We'll have lots of new people next season just to, you know build our numbers but also get more people involved in the sport you know i think like as the because obviously it's going to take time isn't it to rebuild the industry from what's happened but i think it is going to be quite good because people have been stuck inside they are going to want to get out and try new things so it is gonna even if it is people just trying it out yeah i think like I said, I said it before, we've got huge waiting lists for our recreational program. Yeah. Um, t- so big. I wish that we had more time, but due to working full time other than a cheer, it's just not possible. So I just see all these names on the list and I'm, it's gutting. Um, so we are we are doing a few more classes next season. We've really packed it all in next season. We can't possibly fit any more in. Um, just so that we can get a few more kids through the doors. Yeah. It's been a bit rubbish because the restrictions said that we it meant we could only have 15 athletes in the class at once over this period, but that's that's gone now. Um, so we are able to bring a few more in. So we're hoping, because all these kids are desperate. So, yeah. you know, we want to get them in. We want to get them doing, you know, giving it a go. Um, and building, building cheerleading in Scarborough, we're the only team in our in in our town um so obviously we can only take so many kids but the more the merrier Mm. and um we just want to get girls boys just get involved in fitness you know do something different than sitting on your sofa with your ipad or your phone or yeah being on your computer or something